Fans are on their feet and screaming. Snap, spot. Kick is away. He's got the distance. It is good. Good. And the good. Giants are going to Tampa Bay. It's over for the three peats. It's over. That's the greatest euphoria I've ever had in sports right there. I told him when we go to San Francisco, pack for two weeks because we're not coming home. And the plane ride from there to Tampa was the most memorable trip that I've ever been on. It was such a celebration. The players so happy and, you know, they had a couple of beers and relaxed and it was just great. One of the great plane rides in history, flying from San Francisco to Tampa, everyone going nuts the whole time. What to do? Where are you going? We're going to Tampa Bay! Ah! That might have been the best plane ride I've been on in a long time, because I tell you what, we were some, we having some fun on that plane, though. Hey! <laughs> Tampa down, baby! Guess who's oh, behind oh, Fox? Oh, right. oh, my God. Oh. oh, my God. Happy New Year, guys. We're going to the show. What are you going to do down at Tampa Bay? Thank you very much. Do you know who that was, folks? George Bush, huh? Wow! He has to talk to me in 10 damn weeks. Now, of course, we only have one week. We land in T Tampa, we don't even go to bed. I'm going right to work. As the Giants coaching staff prepared for the heavily favored Buffalo Bills, it was clear that the nation's thoughts were with their soldiers overseas. The air base here in eastern Saudi Arabia is again under attack. The biggest sporting event on the American calendar it takes a backseat to the crisis unfolding in the Gulf. The concerns of all Americans are not just on the football game. Know our hearts remain with our fighting men and women in the Persian Gulf, and extreme precautions have been taken here today to see that this contest is not disrupted and that the folks gathered at Tampa Stadium are safe. Early this morning, hundreds of law enforcement officials poured into Tampa Stadium. They checked underneath the hoods of cars and inside the trunks. Meanwhile, FBI agents inside a U.S. Customs helicopter studied the stadium. What I remember, particularly being there during the Gulf War and uh, the ride to the stadium, because we were going against traffic, it was just gridlock and just a sea of red, white, and blue. You know, we had the Bills, we had the Giants, same color schemes patriotic thing going on. It was a surreal experience. And giant football in the Super Bowl. The crowd on its feet, tens of thousands of small American flags being raised. There were a lot of flags in the stadium that day, and that was in support of our, of our servicemen and women across the world. When you stood in the press box and you saw the armed soldiers right outside the press box, a helicopter gun ship was hovering you know, there over the stadium. And uh, you began to, to really uh, wonder about, you know what, gee, should I, should I really have my entire family here? However, it was the Super Bowl. All the precautions have been taken and the build up to the game was sensational. It was a very emotional moment, especially when those F-16s flew over. You know, you just felt proud to be an American and playing in the 25th anniversary of uh, the Super Bowl, it was awesome. First of all, the Super Bowl, Without a doubt, the ultimate as far as emotions, the feelings that you have standing in that tunnel waiting to be introduced. <laughs> Running out and seeing everybody holding the little American flags. I still get chills thinking about that time. And the atmosphere uh, outside uh, the football community, what was going on in the world with uh, the Gulf War, and we were going against a team that was supposedly the lock of the year to win the Super Bowl, and we were underdogs again, but um, we liked that role. Defensive coordinator Bill Belichick would devise a game plan to slow down Buffalo's air assault. He told his players in order to win the game, Thurman Thomas would need to rush for close to 100 yards. This risky strategy met with some resistance from his star players. I think because we were a team that prided itself defensively on not giving up 100-yard rushers, not even giving up 100-yard games, but we are all in an uproar, and at that time, we're thinking Bill is just conceding that Thurman is just this good of a football player that we won't be able to stop him. 
And then he reeled us back in and kind of gave us a method to the madness. I think the running game was the least of our concerns in that game. And Thurman Thomas is a great back. We knew he was going to get some yards. But I didn't feel like we wanted to get into a game where they threw the ball 45 times. I mean, our base defense was cover two. And, and the theory in cover two is jam the outside receivers, get two safeties deep in the middle, and let them throw it inside. And are they going to catch them? Sure. but. Pepper and Carl and Lawrence and those guys, that's what they live for. Good, you can catch for four or five yards, but you're going to pay the price. And that's the way we wanted to play and just try to make it a more physical game. Despite the Giants' efforts to slow down the Bills' vaunted offensive attack, Buffalo would still get out to an early first half lead. Going deep, it's tipped and it's caught by Lofton, who is taken out of bounds at the eight yard line. It'll be first and goal. Don Smith and Mueller are the running backs, and Donnie Smith takes it into the end zone. As the Bills celebrated a 10 3 advantage, their defense would look to capitalize. It's time to put the heat on them now. Party's over, baby. Let's turn it up. We actually uh, survived a bombardment from them early on. I mean, uh, they were fast, quick defensive unit that uh, had some big name players. What a hit on Austin. And Austin was down and not moving. In the first half, I was dinged up, got hit, and they were giving me smelling salts. And then, boom, back into the game. But things would only get harder for Hostetler and the Giants in the second quarter when they were pinned back against their end zone. As I dropped back, I think Otis had to step in to pick somebody up, and as he stepped in, he caught my foot. Uh, I started to stumble, and I felt this big old mitt on my arm. Hostetler trips in the end zone. And then it was everything I could do to, to try to get the rest of my body wrapped back around and try to find the ball. Safety. You know, at the time, I was, I was fired up just because, uh, you know, you don't want to give up a safety. We cost us two points, but it ended up being a huge play. It could have turned the game completely the opposite way, but you know, fortunately able to tuck it in and just give up two. The Giants had taken the Bills' best shot, and like true champions, they picked themselves up and summoned the courage and strength to fight back even harder with a two-minute drill before the half. All of a sudden it was, okay guys, it's do or die. We gotta start wearing these guys down and we gotta play smash mouth football. We gotta move it around, move the pocket around, mix up uh, run and pass and that's what we ended up doing. We drove the ball down, we started to get in position. Steven Baker had done a great job throughout the year. Anytime you pressed him, he's so quick that he beat you. Third down, 10 at the 14, 30 seconds remaining in the half. Oscar is throw. And he beats the main man, Nate Odoms. Ron Earhart called a play that we ran twice before, uh, post corner route, backside X flag. And when he said that, I'm like, oh my God, this is it. I'm about to make this happen. I'm about to run the best post corner route I ever ran in my life, right here, right now. And Haas put it right on the money. Third down, Giants need seven points. He inside released, he made a great stick, and he caught a, what amounts to a corner route up in the corner of the end zone for the big score. Throws end zone, touchdown, Baker! We mentioned it was gut check time, and these Giants just passed that gut check. Came down and scored seven when they needed it. Incredibly important. We went into the halftime, we had come off of a score, which always gives you a little boost of confidence. With momentum in their favor after scoring at the end of the first half, the Giants and their veteran running back, O.J. Anderson, would go on a bruising Super Bowl drive for the ages in the third quarter. Ron Earhart come over and sit down next to me. He said, we're going to run you. I, I need you to, to give me uh, all you got. We're going to just wear him down. So let's like, just go and ram the ball up there, Gigi, you know? And that's what our plan was. Anderson again. Anderson in the Buffalo territory. Mark Kelso comes in to make the hit. Look at him wind up. I mean, that is a punishing job of running. All game long, Kelsey and I kept running to each other, and when I would collide with him, I would hear him go, oh, oh, so I'm like, okay, okay. So I figured if I could intimidate him thinking that I was going to really try to tear his head off, that he would think about how to tackle me. And look at Otis Anderson throw the uppercut. He looked like Muhammad Ali winding up, popped in with that stiff arm. 
And this classic drive would be highlighted just moments later with the Giants facing a crucial third and 13. You can talk about any other play, but Ingram's third down was the most amazing and probably the most exciting third down in Super Bowl history. Hostetler has the ball in the staff throws. Complete. He's got Ingram for maybe a first down. He'll try to the 20. Yes, he's got it. What effort. What effort. Just an unbelievable play. You know, stopping on a dime, twirling, hopping on one leg, everything that he could do to get that first down. That was sort of a, the signature of, of our whole team. Every individual that played in that game was doing the same thing. It was laying everything out on the line. He broke at least five tackles in getting that first down. And I remember saying to Mark Ingram himself after the game, in my opinion, that was the greatest non-scoring play in Super Bowl history up to that point, and I really believe that. This is a tremendous drive by the New York Giants. This is a championship drive. Look at that, over nine minutes. This is a Super Bowl drive. What was the time, an hour, that Buffalo's offense was off the field? Stunning. Second and goal at the one. The Bills have not had the ball in the second half. Touchdown, Anderson. We knew that after what we did clockwise, we needed to make sure that we got a touchdown. Giants on the one and a half yard line. OJ, touchdown! That is one of the great drives in Super Bowl history. After stifling the Bills' high octane offense and dominating the time of possession for most of the game, the Giants held a 17 12 lead. But on the very first play of the fourth quarter, Buffalo would break loose. Gives to Thomas. And Thurman breaking tackles at the 22, inside the 10, touchdown Buffalo. The Bills have been pecking, pecking, pecking. Finally, they get a runner through the linebackers. And with 14.52 to play, Buffalo leads by two. There was tremendous sense of getting it done, of finishing the job at hand. And as they had done all game, the Giants would show their resilience by marching down the field with one more championship drive. Third and seven of the 26, Bills by two, 13.56 to play. And Hostetler throws and it's caught by Bovaro for a big first down to the 43. He is a money player, Mark Bovaro. I mean, I honestly felt it was the culmination of my career. I just considered it was the cherry on top of my NFL Sunday. Over the middle, Bovaro again for a first down to the 27 yard line. With the help of his veteran tight end, Hostetler would continue to drive Big Blue down the field, setting up the Giants' reliable kicker, Matt Barr, for yet another potential game-winning score. Every kick I ever made was to win the Super Bowl. That's what you have practiced 10,000 times, was for that kick. Giants trying to take the lead on a Barr field goal from 21 yards. Barr's kick is good, and New York once again has the lead. It's the fourth lead change in the game. In one of the greatest Super Bowls ever played, Buffalo would counter with a final drive of their own, putting their kicker, Scott Norwood, in position to win the game. Now Norwood tries to kick his longest ever on grass, 47 yards. The whole week, Scott was saying, I hope it comes down to a kick. Why would you want that? I, and sure enough, it did. Be careful what you wish for. Norwood is right on the tip of his range. Eight seconds to go, Giants on top. Back, start. I mean, when he kicked the ball, the minute it went over my head, I'm anticipating that it's going to be wide. In the air, got the distance, it is. And then I heard God jump and say, he missed, he missed. No good. No good. Wide right. I don't know how high I jumped. I could have jumped into the stands. It felt like it took me forever to come down. And I just like, thank you, God. And I finally, finally got my championship when it was all said and done. Yeah, Otis Anderson will end up his career. Yes, the most valuable player. It was a perfect ending. You couldn't have scripted better than that. It's part of history now. 
that was really satisfying to win with that. After losing your quarterback, everybody said you can't win without your starting quarterback. Well, Jeff Hostel proved that wrong. That victory in the Super Bowl was the culmination of a lot of hard work, and I think that was the embodiment of what Giants football was about. I take this opportunity to, uh, on behalf of the New York Giants, to welcome all of you back here. I tell you, this was such a special group of guys, a special group of players. Well, it seems like a long time ago, but you know what? You get back here and you see the guys, and uh, you start seeing some video of it, and a lot of stuff's still fresh in your mind, and that, to me, is pretty amazing. Great to see you. Well, hey, Coach. Big dog. Doing, man? I think of all the teams I ever had, Without question, this was the most resilient, mentally. You know, you have your personal life and your professional life, and then you've got your memorable events. And this is one of those. Good afternoon, fans. And today, the Giants have a very special presentation as we honor and pay tribute to one of the greatest teams in Big Blue history. Number 89, Mark Bavaro, the Super Bowl MVP. Otis Anderson and Hall of Famer number 56 Lawrence Taylor in Super Bowl 25 they didn't give us a chance a backup quarterback an old running back but we had you guys we're glad to get back together share it with each other celebrate it with you and we thank all you Giant fans for your undying support for all the years. Thanks a lot. Go Giants!